Hello, and thank you for coming for the screening of Ernest Lubitsch's uh, Forbidden Paradise. Um, this, this restoration was actually made at uh, Cineric. You know, we, we, you might have met them for the past couple of days. They've been here, Balaj and then Francine Ayaris. And uh, um, to introduce the, uh, the restoration, and, and it was made uh, by the Museum of Modern Art. It was a difficult restoration. And to introduce not only the, the restoration, but the film itself, uh, is uh, uh, a friend and um, uh, Dave Kerr. And Dave, for many, many years, uh, um, uh, incarnated his um, passion and, and profound understanding and knowledge for film uh, into in very intelligent criticism <laughs> and uh, and you know and and for for a number of years now he's a curator at the at the museum of modern art where his choice of series um, is preservation itself because illuminates uh, lesser known parts of uh, especially the american cinema so dave kerr Thank you, Julia, and, and thanks everyone for coming out on a perfectly nice Sunday to see a silent movie. This is Forbidden Paradise, uh, released by Paramount Pictures in 1924, directed by Ernst Lubitsch, who was probably the most famous director in the world in 1924, and starring Paula Negri, who was arguably one of the two or three most famous stars in the world in 1924. Um, tremendous international success, wonderful reviews, and when Paramount decided to do their preservation program in the 1960s, they selected 10 silent films out of the more than 700 features they'd made. This was not one of them. Uh, really was not known to exist until Eileen Bowser at the Museum of Modern Art got two badly damaged prints from the Czech Film Archive in the 1970s. Both of them incomplete, both of them in just horrible condition, uh, ripped to shreds, uh, black scratches all the way through them, uh, check subtitles, of course, and there just wasn't much that people could do with that kind of material back in the 70s. So it sat in the MoMA vaults for a long time. There was a 40-minute version that has circulated a bit. If you go on YouTube, you can see that old version, which is an illegal dupe, actually, of our material from, from MoMA. Um, and then like uh, three or four years ago, uh, Peter Williamson, who's the technical head of restoration at MoMA, and one of the you know, two or three geniuses in that field, a guy who doesn't get enough credit, really, uh, decided that the digital restoration technology had advanced to a point where we could actually tackle this thing. So we did, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, it turned out that if we put those two incomplete prints together, we had about 90, 95% of the movie. And we were able to find an original screenplay so we could recreate all the original intertitles, which we did not sort of in the style of a Paramount film of that period. We had, well, the original nitrate was tinted so we knew what colors every scene should be. Um, we missed like one rather important piece of exposition which we had to cover by repeating a couple of shots and even doing some animation, which I hope you won't notice at all. But if you do, it's marked MoMA in the lower right-hand corner to let you know that it's not first generation. It's not authentic. Um, it just brought you, you know, full of surprises. There's a beautiful uh, uh, shot, you know, a typical of Lubitsch, where he's suggesting the two young lovers are sitting on a, a bench in a park. And there's a shot of the goldfish pole, pool that reflects their, their images. And it suddenly their images are broken up when this big carp flies in and shatters the image. Well, someone had helpfully reversed that film, turned it upside down, so that the images would be you know, right side up, since it should be upside down. So we were able to fix that, you know, fix the fixes that people had put in over the years. And... Uh, yeah, this is actually the first time we've screened publicly the new version with a soundtrack on it. Like most of the big silent films, it was released with a, a cue sheet for the local musicians to play. Uh, it's a list of you know excerpts from classical pieces, folk music, you know, mostly out of copyright stuff uh, that the local theater could either assign to their piano player to do or the the bigger houses 
went to an orchestra of 17, 18 pieces. Uh, so we got a, a, a musicologist, an expert in silent film, to look up those excerpts, reorchestrate them, do a score for us, and we recorded it uh, in Prague with an orchestra last year, and have now married the two bits together. So what you're going to see here is, hopefully, what you're going to hear here is uh, more or less what an audience would have heard in 1924 at a nice first-run theater. So I think we should let it go with that. I can go on about Lubitsch and Polonegri forever. If people have any questions, I'm happy to discuss afterwards. But let's have a look at uh, Forbidden Paradise. Thank you. 